Welcome back to Horror Recaps. My name is Freddy, and in a moment, you're going to listen to a frightening tale narrated by me. Beware, fear awaits you. Robert Ledgard is a plastic surgeon who has dedicated his research to developing synthetic skin that can withstand burns and repel insect bites. In his private estate, Robert has kept a stunning woman named Vera, and Marilia is the servant who helps him keep an eye on her. Vera is not permitted to leave her room and is still under surveillance all the time. The food and other necessities are delivered to her through the dumbwaiter. Despite a closet full of clothes, they all lay in tatters, and Vera is left to wear only a fitted body stocking. One day, Robert arrives at the laboratory in his own home carrying a curious-looking bag. Within it, he has a packet of blood that he had been eager to observe under the microscope, and after carefully examining it, he places the blood into a strange machine. Robert then goes to his room, where he gazes at the sight of Vera sleeping naked on a massive screen. He takes a small box of opium and enters Vera's room. However, Robert is shocked to find that the girl is not sleeping, but is rather unconscious, with cuts on various parts of her body. Her wrists, her breast, and her stomach were all marked with deep gashes. Shocked by this sight, Robert immediately carries her into an operating theater. Soon, Robert manages to treat all of her wounds, but Vera rather prefers to be killed, than go through the torture of living this captive life. The next morning, Marilia brings more animal blood in a small plastic jerry can for his experiment. In the lab, Robert takes out a huge petri dish with a floating layer of fabric-like substance. He then starts to shape it into the body of the mannequin. This is the synthetic skin that he has been working on, Later, Robert shapes Vera with the same synthetic skin and tells her that she won't feel the burns from now on. He even lights the flame directly on her thigh to prove it. A few days later, at a medical symposium, Robert displays his latest invention. After the successful synthesis of artificial skin resistant to burns and insect bites, he names this artificial skin after his late wife's name, Gal. The president of the scientific community has a hunch that Robert has mutated the skin through transgenesis. So, to confirm this, he privately asks Robert about it. Robert admits to having used pig cells for the transgenesis, since illegal transgenesis is forbidden in biological research. This clashes with bioethics, so the president forbids him to continue with his research, or else he will have to report it to the scientific community. Now, since he no longer can work on artificial skin, Robert tells Vera that she can have the skin and boast about having the best skin in the world. Hearing this, she asks him what he's going to do with her now. Vera also puts forth the option to let them live together, but he immediately shuts her off, ignoring her idea. She tries to stop him from leaving the room and also tries to seduce him, but Robert makes his way out anyway. The next morning at the breakfast table, Marilia tells him that he shouldn't have used the face of his late wife on Vera. She tells Robert that the only two options left with him are either to kill her or to keep her hidden forever. After his research has been halted, Robert fires all of the servants and the only one remaining is Marilia. That day, a strange man in a tiger costume and a face mask comes to Robert's place. It turns out to be Zika, Marilia's son. Zika tells her that he has come for the carnival celebration and also to visit her, and asks Marilia to let him in. She is hesitant to let him in at first, however, when Zeka promises her to leave after a few minutes, Marilia opens the gate for her son. But meeting his mother is just an excuse. In reality, Zika has been running from the cops, as his face was identified in last night's robbery in a jewelry store. The footage has been circulated all over the country, and police are currently looking for him. Zika asks his mother to help him hide in Robert's house for a few days. But Marilli is dumbfounded by his request after all the things he has done to Robert in the past. Next, Zika sees Vera exercising on one of the screens. He mistakes her for Robert's dead wife and demands to see her in prison. But Marilia refuses his demands and threatens to shoot him. 
and while he's trying to get a hold of Marilia's gun, she fires a shot. Hearing the noise coming out from the kitchen, Vera asks Marilia through the intercom if everything is alright. She panics when she does not hear any response from the other side. Back in the kitchen after tying Marilia to a chair and gagging her mouth with a cloth, Zika heads to search for Vera. Looking at all the downstairs rooms, he now heads upstairs. Soon he finds the room Vera is in and tells her to open the door, but she tells him that she does not have the key. Moments later, Zika comes back up after getting the key from Marilia. Just as he tries to enter, Vera kicks the door, resulting in him falling on his butt. She tries to escape from him, but Zika grabs her legs, restricting her from running away. He overpowers her and starts kissing her against her will. He curiously asks Vera how she managed to survive the fire when he clearly left her in a burning car. Vera pleads with him to let her go and begs that she will do anything he wants. At this point, Zika has torn her clothes and is sucking her nipple and licking her chest. It turns out that Zika plans to hold her hostage to make Robert fix his face. Then he carries Vika into the room and forces himself on her. On the other hand, Marilia witnesses the scene of Zika assaulting the poor woman on the screen. Just then, Robert arrives, fuming with anger, and he flings the door open, immediately firing a shot at Zika, and right away he pulls Vera into his tight embrace. The next day, while cleaning the mattress covered with Zika's blood, Marilia reveals that Robert and Zika are actually brothers from different fathers, and she never told them. In the past, when Marilia had been serving in the Ledgard household, she gave birth to Robert from Mr. Ledgard, whereas Zika was the outcome of her affair with a servant. Since Mrs. Ledgard didn't have a child of her own, she adopted Robert as her son. However, Marilia has always taken care of him ever since he was a small child. Zika, on the other hand, got associated with bad company and left home. She never saw Zika again. Until one day, he came back home, pleading with Marilia to let him hide in the house. Later, Gal discovered that Marilia was hiding Zika back in the outhouse. At that time, Gal was smitten by him so much that they ran away together. But unfortunately, their car crashed on the way. Zika survived with minor scars on his face and immediately fled the scene, leaving Gal behind who was severely burned with no hope of surviving. Nonetheless, Robert didn't lose hope and took great care of her until she started showing improvements. Then one day, Gal heard her only child, Norma, singing. This sparked rays of light in her heart. She dragged her body to the window, but saw her deformed reflection in the glass. Gal could not bear such deformed looks on herself and jumped out of the window. Meanwhile, little Norma witnessed the death of her mother, and this incident greatly traumatized her, and according to Marilia, years later, Norma also took her own life in the same manner. While Marilia and Vera are talking about her past, Robert arrives after disposing of Zika's dead body. He takes Vera back to his room and sleeps with her. That night, he dreams of a particular night from six years ago. In his dream, Robert and Norma have come to attend a wedding party. After some time, when he cannot find Norma in the hall, Robert goes out to the back garden in search of her. There, he sees multiple young couples engaging in sexual activities. Seconds later, Robert sees a boy riding away on his bike, and a few meters away, he finds Norma's shoe and cardigan lying on the ground, and a bit further from there, he sees unconscious Norma on the ground. Seeing her unconscious, Robert tries waking her up, and when she finally regains consciousness, Norma finds Robert directly above her and thinks that he has assaulted her. Her anxiety kicks in and she starts screaming and pushing him. Subsequently, Norma develops a fear of all men and spends a year in a mental institution. And eventually, after some time, she ends up killing herself. Meanwhile, Vera also dreams of the same night, but she dreams of a young boy named Vicente. He works in his mother's dress shop and also happens to attend the wedding party where he meets Norma through mutual friends. After enjoying the party, they come out to the garden 
By then, Vicente and Norma are left alone by their friends. The boy is under the influence of drugs, even before he joined the party. And when he asks Norma if she has also taken any pills, she misunderstands this question. She thinks that Vicente is asking her about prescribed medication. So, Norma lists out the medications that she has been taking. After Vicente catches her from stumbling due to her heels, he kisses her for a moment. Norma then throws her heels in cardigan, blurting out that she would be naked all the time if she could, as the clothes gave her claustrophobia. Vicente then kisses her and lays her on the ground. He peels off her clothes, exposing her bare chest, and showers her with kisses. Norma suddenly starts to react to the song playing at the party. It is the same song that she was singing when her mother took her own life, and as a result, Norma starts panicking and screaming. Now, to stop her from creating a scene, Vicente covers her mouth with his hand, but she bites it. So, to contain her, he slaps Norma, and this leads to her losing consciousness. Not knowing what to do, Vicente adjusts her clothes and flees from there. But while he's leaving on his bike, Robert notices him. Norma is then admitted to the Neuropsychiatric Institute for her unstable mental condition. Even when Robert comes to visit her, she used to keep herself shut in the closet. Since his visits are taking a toll on her mental health, the doctor suggests he stop visiting so frequently. Next, Robert tracks Vicente down and chases him along the dark road. Eventually, he catches Vicente's bike to crash and injects him with a sedative. Robert then keeps him captive, chained up without leaving anything to eat, just a bucket full of water. Meanwhile, Vicente's mother has reported to the police about her son's disappearance. When the police call her after finding his bike at the bottom of a cliff, they conclude that he is likely dead by now and is swept by the sea. However, she refuses to believe that her son is dead. She thinks he might have been kidnapped as the body is yet to be found. A few days later, Robert comes to see Vicente. After cleaning and shaving him, he makes the boy unconscious and takes him to the operating room. Moments later, Vicente wakes up on the operating table. When he asks Robert what he has done to him, the surgeon calmly replies that he has undergone vaginoplasty. A few days later, when Vicente is able to walk on his own, Robert comes with a box of different sized dilators and informs him to keep his vagina open and gradually make it deepen. That day, Robert reveals that he is the father of the girl that Vicente had assaulted at the wedding party night. But since Vicente was under the influence of drugs at the time, he claims to not remember it. Now, Vicente has a petite body and feminine breasts hanging on his chest. Robert has brought a body stocking that will act as his second skin and help mold his body. His face is also supported by a face mask, which will help shape his feminine face. While changing into that stocking, Vicente tricks Robert to help him with the zipper and then attacks him. He grabs the key to the door and runs from there. Unfortunately, before he can reach the main door, Robert locks the door with his remote and approaches Vicente, grabbing his gun. Desperate, Vicente threatens him with a knife, but this does not faze him. Eventually, he slits his own neck in an attempt to die, but his fate has other plans as Robert manages to save him. Several weeks later, the face mask is removed, revealing a beautiful face that is a replica of Robert's late wife. He then renames him Vera. Initially, Vicente, who turned into Vera, tries to rebel against Robert, but over the period of six years, his appearance has been completely transformed from a male to a female. Vera now spends time watching TV all day long, scribbling on the wall and doing yoga, Meanwhile, Robert has brought Marilia into his house to look after Vera, and she even mentions that the girl looks like Gal. Now, back to the present, Vera is no longer confined to her room as she helps Marilia in the kitchen. But Marilia is still hostile towards her. Nevertheless, Vera is now living with Robert and Marilia, but occasionally she is allowed to leave the house with the helper. One day, while Marilia and Vera are out, Fulgencio, one of Robert's old colleagues, come to visit him. He talks about the news article about missing Vicente and fake documents that Robert has used during the time of Vicente's sex change operation. 
Fulgencio accuses Robert of kidnapping Vicente, fabricating documents for gender confirmation surgery, and conducting the forbidden biological experiment on him. Vera overhears their conversation and defends Robert by saying that Robert didn't kidnap her and that it is out of her own will that she is there. She makes it clear to Fulgencio that she is no longer Vicente and that she is Vera Cruz. Hearing this, Fulgencio has nothing more to say, so he leaves silently. Next, Vera notices a photograph of her past self as Vicente in the newspaper in the missing people column. Later that night, they share a very steamy time together. Vera tells him it is still painful for her to have vaginal intercourse. While Robert suggests that they try a different method, Vera remembers that she brought a lubricating cream earlier that day. She then goes through all of her shopping bags but cannot find them. When Robert suggests to her that she might have left it in her purse downstairs, Vera immediately runs to get her purse, but along with lubricating cream, she puts Robert's gun into her bag as well. Then she kisses the photograph of Vicente and hurries upstairs. Meanwhile, Robert has been eagerly waiting for her. As soon as Vera enters the room, she passes him the cream, but takes out the gun. And without further ado, she shoots him. The gunshot startles Marilia, and she immediately comes upstairs to check on the situation, also holding her gun. She barges into the room and sees her dead son, but cannot find Vera. At the same time, Vera shoots her from under the bed, and with her dying breath, Marilia utters, I knew it, as her last sentence. After successfully killing the mother and son, Vera changes her clothes and leaves the house without turning back. In the next scene, Vera's back at her mother's shop where she sees Christina and her mother working inside as they could not recognize who she really is. Vera turns around to leave, but thinking of her as a customer, Christina follows Vera to assist around the shop. Just then, Vera breaks the news and tells her that she is Vicente and has just escaped after all these years. She tells Christina about her kidnapping and her sex change operation, and also reveals that she had killed two people to get away. Vera proves to Christina that she really is Vicente by telling her about their conversation from six years ago. Seconds later, Vera's mother comes out to check on them and finds both of the girls being emotional but she couldn't understand what was going on. And as the movie ends, Vera nervously reveals his real identity to his mother. Please make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.